All right, welcome everyone. I'm Brian, uh, the head of content here at Santiment. I'm joined by our good friend Dinome, who's been a fan of Santiment's content and insights, charts, uh, indicators, like many of you are, and he's kind of learning the ropes uh, as we go here. Uh, the unique thing about Dinome is he's a, a pretty impressive and well-known content creator himself who does a lot of cryptocurrency analysis. And I thought it would be a great idea for him and I to just have a quick introductory call about Santiment's tools uh, through the lens of uh, how we would typically teach this to someone new who's coming on to Santiment. So welcome to Gnome. Maybe you could introduce yourself and tell us really br briefly about your channel. Sure. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Dinome. I have a YouTube channel. Um, I've been trading basically from 2017. Uh, I do technical analysis, I trade altcoins, and I also use fundamental analysis, and that's what I use uh, sentiment for. That's awesome. And as far as like technical analysis, are you talking like support and resistance levels, things of that nature? Yeah, I, I, I do very basic one. I do RSI and sure. just a chart. Which, by the way, we have RSI. We actually just recently added it, maybe about three to four months ago. So we can briefly look at that as well as a few other quick tools here. Um, but thank you so much for the intro. Um, I'm just going to do like a quick rapid fire recap of some of our best tools. And along the way, perhaps you can let me know um, what kinds of overlap this may have to the kind of content you have yourself. And we'll go from there. Perfect. All right. So this is kind of the home base that I think a lot of our users like to stop by and look at when they first come to Santiment. This is our screener. You'll notice it right here at the top of our screen. You'll see infographics right here. And you'll notice I enabled just the social volume tree map and price bar chart. This is the social volume tree map right here. And this, of course, is the price chart. You can, of course, also include a price tree map if you'd like to get a little more detailed in terms of proportion to market cap and then ho hover over and see the price changes there. I think for most people, they tend to prefer positive and negative bars kind of like this, at least I do myself, but everyone is different. The other thing you can add is the market cap and volume widget down here. There we go. And you'll see the screener market cap over the last seven days based on whatever set of assets you're looking at. And you can also see the screener volume, which in this case, it looks like crypto has been up in terms of market cap, but the volume this past week compared to the week prior is down pretty significantly. So that would be something I would probably take note of uh, when it comes to the vulnerability of the markets, if you will, uh, by any one big trade, it's a lot more vulnerable now than it had been in the previous week. So of course you can hover over things, look at any price changes, the actual raw price in USD, how much their market cap is, things like that. You can even sort by ascending market cap or descending market cap. Lots of different things here. Um, you can also sort these by social volume changes, like 30 days here or one day, things like that. So that's just a quick review of the screener. You can also scroll down and see market cap. You can sort by development activity, daily active address. You can see the market segments associated with each of these tokens. And you can even click this button. As you can see, the price change finally sorted. And you can see all of the best performing assets over the last week in this case. But if I go here where this button was, I can see all the different metrics available on Sansmint. And there are hundreds of them you can click and basically enable and disable the ones you care about most and they will pop up right here on the header. So that's another cool feature as well. All right, besides that, let's go to our chart page really quick. I've loaded one of my favorite templates that I often use for sharing uh, what's going on in the markets with our community. And here we have the main chart page. And what I did is I clicked the drop down and I clicked on load and I just selected this chart, which is publicly available by the way. Actually, I take that back. It should be publicly available. Now it is as of live on this recording. So anyone who, who views the main template will see all of these same charts. And these are some of our favorites at Santiment that 
really deep dive into what's happening behind the curtains of crypto. You can see declining tracks transaction volume, which kind of makes sense to go along with the declining prices. Same with declining daily active addresses, which is the unique amount of addresses on the network. Circulation is declining. MVRV is a very important one. What this does is it measures the average trading returns of any wallet that's been active for a given asset, in this case, Bitcoin, because up here I've chosen Bitcoin, but of course I can click that and click on any other asset. Mind you, by the way, most of these metrics are available for Bitcoin, Ethereum-based assets. There's a few others like Cardano um, and XRP uh, and Bitcoin Cash too. So those five networks or so are the main ones, but we're consistently adding more over time. Like those of you who are big Solana fans, we are working to eventually integrate Solana blockchain into our um, list of assets that have this level of granularity of metrics. So anyways, MVRV, you can quickly see whether it's below or above the zero line. Ideally, buy signals are when you see MVRV lines below the zero axis line um, and sell signals are when they're significant, significantly above the zero axis line, kind of like what we saw in early March, right before that all time high happened. Um, I'll take a breath here really quick to know how is everything kind of coming across as a user who's still seeing this pretty fresh right now? Uh, yeah, it's, it looks good. It, uh, I like to look at these kind of uh, charts to understand if uh, the price is fundamentally valuable uh, or undervalued uh, is a better term. Of course, yeah. No, I mean, that's that's the goal, right? Is we're trying to find uh, the specific metrics on Sandbase that really give us a, a good signal uh, and a reliable, consistent signal as to whether we're over or below uh, where we would expect to be with the price at its current price. Uh, just like we have with funding rate, for example, we can see points in which the crypto community is getting extremely long, meaning that the uh, bets in favor of the price going up are outpacing those bets that are hoping for prices to go down. Um, generally, when you see these big long bars, that means these uh, longs are way outpacing shorts and are actually paying shorts in order to open those big margined or leveraged trades. On the other end of the spectrum, when you see these red bars starting to appear, that means there's a lot of shorting happening. And uh, the reason this is significant is you tend to see the price move the opposite direction of the way perpetual contract funding rates are moving at any given time. So you want to avoid being all in on your portfolios when you're seeing everybody and their mother betting on uh, crypto going up and you actually want to be in more when everyone's betting on it going down. That's the general theory behind funding rate. And there are a lot of traders out there um, who really use this metric as a great counter trading tool. I, I personally use this as well. Uh, I think it's a very, very uh, reliable indicator. And one thing you didn't mention here is uh, when the funding rate is positive, it costs you to hold a long position. So yes. it incentivizes people to actually close the long position as well. And when the funding rate is negative, it actually incentivizes people to open long positions because you suddenly start to earn money simply by having an open long position. That's a really great point. Yeah, you, you eloquently explained that better than I have. So uh, I agree 100%. I mean, the funding rates are kind of the exchange's public way of telling you when people are, are swinging their pendulums too far one direction. Uh, and yeah. It's free information that we just kind of organize on sentiment and make it easily digestible um, without having to go through a, a long table of numbers. We've also got whale transactions. I like it a lot because it just shows a quick conversion for, you know, when those transactions are well above the $100,000 range or $1 million range. Um, down here, we have the actual uh, segregated tiers based on how big or small they are. So like, for example, if I just 
control click on one to 10, this is showing just how many addresses on the Bitcoin network exist that hold between one to 10 BTC. And obviously it's been climbing a little bit as of late, but they were taking a ton of profit at the early part of the year that was kind of foreshadowing that those dolphin low shark end wallets were expecting for the price to eventually correct. You can also, of course, look at the percentage held. So for example, this 100 to 1000 BTC wallet tier, you can see that they have been declining in terms of the total supply held. Um, for the sake of time, and there are plenty of other metrics on this template, so I urge you guys to check out the main template. Let's check out the social trends page now. And here, you can see more about how the crowd is interacting with the daily topics that are kind of driving markets. And what this does is it'll actually show you the top 10 most rising discussions uh, or most rising topics uh, based on the percentage rise in their discussion rate compared to their normal resting rate. So for example, you know, the word Ohio is not talked about a whole lot, but because it was booed at an Ohio State University commencement, suddenly it's being uh, trended across social media um, due to the fact that it is getting so much uh, attention all of a sudden. So these are the kinds of things that you may not be thinking of, but it's a great way to kind of get an objective look at the news just based on math of how much people are increasing the visibility of a certain subject. So I really love this and it's a great way for me to find uh, insights and, and various information that I can report about to our community. This tab, you can see the historical crypto trends, uh, which are basically more like mid or long-term types of um, subjects that get a lot of attention over time. Bitcoin ETF, CPI, AI, bull market versus bear market, stuff like that. And you can directly compare how some of these main key topics are fluctuating relative to each other. And then similar to trending words, we have this trending coins tab, which will actually show you the assets that are getting the most rising attention compared to their normal averages. Right now, for example, we have Render, a hot AI related asset that's the number one trending token, almost certainly due to the fact that its price has been on an enormous run. You can even open up the AI summary, which is scraping constantly from all of the discussions that are going on in crypto and tells us in a usually a concise one or two or maybe three sentence uh, paragraph what's going on and why this asset is trending. So this is the kind of like the main summary of it. You've also got the bearish argument right here or the bullish argument so you can get the full context. You even have words that are connected to render when they're being mentioned. So if render is, is spreading on social media and you're not quite sure why, you can see, well, it's being talked about a lot in tandem with Bitcoin and the altcoin market. It's even being discussed in relation to Velo. So on top of that, you can click on it click on render here and you'll just see the social volume and dominance related to render over time. And you can scroll down and see it by social platform, Telegram, Reddit. It looks like Reddit and Twitter are talking about it quite a bit while 4chan, Bitcoin Talk and Telegram aren't really talking about it much at all. So that's something that you might be interested in if you believe that one platform tends to get uh, tops and bottoms right or wrong more than others. Um, the other thing that I can show for now is the crypto narratives page. And we'll conclude with this. Um, it's simply a visual graphic of around the top 15 or 20 topics that are getting <coughs> uh, more midterm attention. And you can see you know, how they tend to be trending. For example, the Hong Kong ETF is being talked about less and less because more time has elapsed since the announcement was made about a month ago. Bitcoin's price being talked about a little less because there's more attention 
um, being placed on all coins at this time. Uh, inflation is starting to get a little more attention as we start to get a little bit closer to the next FOMC decision uh, here in the US. So this is a great visual way to understand which news stories are out there that are uh, kind of increasing or decreasing in terms of attention. So all of that said, Dinoam, I know that we are kind of just doing a part one today, but did anything pop out to you? And, and do you have any kind of clarifying questions you want to go over? Yeah, I would like to ask uh, about the, um, uh, I think it was the social trends, uh, when it showed uh, what is the most trending coin. Mm -hmm. uh, my question is, does it, uh, is it like the most trending uh, coin by volume or does it uh, calculate in the uh, market cap or anything like that? Yeah, that's a great question. So if it was just by raw social volume, we'd always kind of see Bitcoin, Ethereum, yeah. Cardano, Chainlink, XRP, some of those popular altcoins, they'd always be at the top. So what we do is we calculate by percentage rise over the usual amount of discussion. So render, mm. let's just arbitrarily say it's talked about maybe 1 20th the amount of time as Bitcoin. Well, if render suddenly you know, doubles and is now being talked about at one tenth the amount of time as Bitcoin, it's going to show up here as one of the top coins that are trending due to the percentage increase over the normal resting rate. Uh, if render was kind of just under the radar and not really standing out to traders. So that's how yeah. we calculate that. And that's why you don't see the usual candidates, even though we do see Ethereum here at number eight, meaning that it is still being talked about quite a bit, I think in relation to the uh, Ethereum ETFs that are being yeah. speculated about right now. For sure. Uh, one more question about this. Um, when you are trading coins, uh, do you think when it's highly positive, do you think it's a good time to actually sell it? Uh, does it show you the top or can you sometimes find divergence like uh, you see uh, let's say rising volume in, in 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 social volume but the price hasn't moved yet and yeah. you can kind of arbitrage that situation how, how would you use this information so you're asking just to be be clear uh when the crowd starts to uh, become bullish toward an asset does that yeah. make the price continue to go up or reverse uh yeah yes so how would you use this information right. to basically uh so one of the Make a better trade. yeah one of the mantras that we we tend to communicate the most here at sentiment is markets tend to move the opposite direction of what the majority crowd expects at any given mm. time so they move the opposite direction of the crowd's expectation while at the same time they move the same direction as whales and key stakeholders um generally that's kind of like the two parts you want to pay attention to follow the large stakeholders and if the majority is making these coins trend assuming that they're trending because of a price pump and that's why everyone's talking about it that mm. usually means that we're actually getting close to a top now not yeah. all of these assets are trending due to price rises uh, you can see the first three are this is what the red line is here but there should be at least one kind of like fet eh. I guess Ethereum would be the best example. So most of these are altcoins that are pumping and that's why they're being talked about a lot, but you'll see like a, you know, something more like uh, just an overall discussion about the network, like we're seeing with Ethereum right now. And that, that would be more of a neutral signal, but all of these that are seeing rising social volume because of the rises in price, that's usually an indication that these would be ones that you could take profit in assuming you're owning it every once yeah. in a while, you might see the reverse happening where it's trending, you know, because of an SEC lawsuit that was just filed, like we saw with XRP maybe a year and a half ago. And it, XRP was suddenly trending all the time because everyone got bearish on it. And what do you know, that ended up being a prime time to buy XRP because all the little traders were dumping it to those big key whales who may have had insider knowledge that there was nothing to worry about, who knows? 
Uh, but that's generally how the crowd sentiment works. You want to, when you see an extreme lean from the majority of, of traders, that's when you can capitalize by counter trading against them. All right. That's, that's a very good explanation. Thank you for that. No, yeah, absolutely. Great question. It's one of the, the prime things that we love to talk about on uh, our weekly live streams, which maybe we could have you on at some point. And um, I'm looking forward to a part two uh, where we can get more into the nitty gritty and more of the uh, tier two metrics that we like to look at. But um, yeah, I think this was an awesome comprehensive overview for the 15 to 20 minutes that we spent here. And uh, maybe, Denome, you can let everyone know where they can check out your YouTube, where perhaps I'll be making an appearance on in the near future. Sure. So uh, you can just find me if you type Denome. And uh, I have about 39,000 followers at the moment on YouTube. And uh, yeah, that's basically the the main channel. And just yesterday, I, I post market updates on, on Bitcoin and altcoins. Currently, I'm not too bullish on altcoins, so I'm mostly covering Bitcoin. But I actually used sentiment just yesterday for my own charge. But I don't do social analytics that much. I mostly do fundamental. So this is something that I'm kind of looking to incorporate as well. Absolutely. And we love to learn from traders like yourself who integrate fundamental and sometimes technical metrics that we don't always look at. So I'm looking forward to doing more uh, breakdowns of the market with you in the near future. And um, yeah, I think with that, we'll end this video here. And uh, I want to thank you, Dinome, for joining me for this brief call. Thank you. Thank you, my friend.